Holy shit. One of the first literary works I've encountered in my early teenage years. I remember sitting in class and listening to an audio called The Mask of Red Death. Even though there was an exam later on that week, I didn't care. All I knew was I just lost my dad. And the only thing that was calming to me was this story. Today, I too am a poet and short story author. Thanks to Edgar Allan Poe's stories and poetry and the inspiration they've impacted in my creative writing and in my life. So here it is, the masterpiece that started it all, The Mask of Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous, but its avatar and its seal and the horror of blood. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness, and then profuse bleeding at the pores with dissolution. The scarlet stains upon the body, and especially upon the face of the victim, were the past fear which shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow men. And the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. When his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court. And when these retired to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys, as in structure, the creation of the princess on his centric yet august taste, a strong and lofty wall great it in. This wall had gates of iron, the courtiers having entered broad furnaces and bouncing hammers and welded the bolts. They resolved to leave means neither of ingress or egress to the sudden impulses of despair or a frenzy from within. The abbey was amply provisioned with such precautions the courtiers might abide deviance to contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons. There were improvisatory. There were ballet dancers. There were musicians. There was beauty. There was wine. All of the, all of these and security were within, without, was red death. It was towards the close of the fifth or sixth month of his seclusion. And while the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, the, that the Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a mass ball of the most unusual magnificence, it was a voluptuous scene, that masquerade. But first, let me tell you of the rooms in which it was held. These were seven and imperial suite. In many palaces, however, such suites were a long and straight vista while the folding doors slide back nearly to the walls of either hand, so that the view of the whole extent is scarcely impeded. Here the case was very different, as might have been expected from the Duke's love of the bazaar. The apartments were so irregularly disposed that the vision embraced but little more than at one time. There was a sharp turn at every twenty or thirty yards, and at each turn a novel effect to the right and left in the middle of each wall a tall and narrow gothic window looked out upon the closed corridor which pursued the winding of the suite these windows were of stained glass whose color varied in accordance with the previous or stained glass whose color varied in accordance with the prevailing hue of the decorations of the chamber into which it opened that at the eastern extremity was hung, for example, in blue and vividly 
That is our episode for the week. Thank you for listening. If you want to hear more episodes coming up in the future, then definitely add the tea and tear to your playlist on Spotify or Apple Podcast. You can also check out the show on my Wicked Majesty channel. This is Kia, and I will catch you next week. Same time, same place. Have a good night.